we are going to discuss concrete categories. The motivating question is, what do we mean by structure, as in a structured set? For example, a group is a structured set where the structure is given by the group operations. Uh, a topological space is a structured set where the structure is given by the topology. Many categories with structure can be described by a presentation of the objects by data structure and properties, a DSP. What we mean by this is that an X-structured object, X sigma, in a category E, defined by data structure properties, consists of data, uh, which is an encoding of the object by some other well-understood category, X. Usually, it will be a set. Um, the structure is a collection of general constructions, sigma, of the underlying data, X. Uh, for example, operations on the set or collections of subsets of the set, um, and so on. By properties, we mean axioms concerning the structure. Uh, for example, certain compositions of structures are going to be equal. Uh, there'll be a composition of diagrams um, that commute or we'll have that the collections of subsets are going to be closed under intersection, union, um, or whatever type of operations can be defined on them. Then the arrows of the category E can be defined by this DSP as those arrows of the underlying category of the data, which preserves a structure. So for example, um, F from this X structured object X sigma to this other X structured object X prime uh, sigma prime are exactly those arrows F X to X prime and X such that F somehow relates uh, the structure sigma to sigma prime in a reasonable way. Then if a category E is defined by this data structure properties where the objects have underlying data in a category X, there is this forgetful functor U from E to X, which takes these E arrows, um, F from this X structured object X sigma to this other X structured object X prime sigma prime to the, the underlying um, arrow in the category X. Such a category, which is given by data structure properties, we may call a DSP category. And this is not a formal definition, but just a guiding heuristic for understanding how concrete categories arise. Now, since arrows in E were defined as those X arrows, which preserve the structure, we see that this functor that is defined by this data structure properties is always faithful. And so we are going to take that as our formal definition. So we say that a concrete category over x is a faithful functor u e to x, and we call this underlying category x the base category. We will say that e is concrete over x when the faithful functor is evident, so we often just omit u. If the base category is set, we will often just say that e is a concrete category, and this is sometimes just um, called a construct when it's a concrete category over set. So let's give some examples. The first example we give is that there is this forgetful functor from topological spaces, the category of topological spaces to set, uh, and that is concrete, and it takes continuous maps from um, x to x prime to topological spaces uh, to the set map f x to x prime. Similarly, we have a forgetful functor from the category of metric spaces with non-expansive maps to set. Um, another example, this one algebraic, is we have a forgetful functor from uh, the category of groups to set, and this takes group morphisms and forgets all the operations that give a, uh, a group structure on these groups. We also have that every small category A is concrete via this Cayley functor, C, A to set, which takes objects in A to the set CX, which is given by all those arrows in A such that the codomain is equal to X. And then it takes these arrows F, X to X prime in A, and it gives a set mapping 
f lower star cx to cx prime and this is just post composition so it takes a arrow g with codomain x and it post composes uh, f onto this uh, another example this one is very similar but um, it's much more categorical it's that if you have a small category a it is concrete over the pre over pre sheaves via the yoneda embedding functor y a to this category of pre sheaves and it takes this a object x to the pre sheaf y x um, Another example is that you have a category is a thin category, which you may remember as a category where there's at most one arrow between every uh, pair of objects. So it could be an empty cent or a singleton. Um, and so a category is thin if and only if it is concrete over the terminal category one. And this category one is just a, a category with a single object and a single arrow, which is the identity. Um, we also have that the walking arrow category, which consists of two distinct objects and one non-identity arrow between them, is concrete over every non-empty category. So you, uh, you, you can freely choose any arrow in the codomain category as long as it's not the empty category. Um, we also have that subcategories are always concrete via the inclusion functor. Uh, moreover all subcategories of concrete categories over x are also concrete over x since faithful functors compose for example the category of compact house dwarf topological spaces uh, is a subcategory of topological spaces and that's faithful over set uh, it's concrete over set and we also have that the category of abelian groups is a subcategory of group and that is concrete over set as well we also have that the category of sec sets can be concrete over the category of relations via its um, graph relation association. Um, so recall that a object in relation, the category of relations, is just going to be a set, and that an arrow r x to y in relation is a subset r of the Cartesian product x and y. And composition then is uh, given in the following way. So if you have a relation R from X to Y and another relation S from Y to Z, uh, what we do is we take, um, we consider these relations as monic pairs. So we have R, X to Y is a monic pair and S, Y to Z is a monic pair. We take the pullback over Y of these two um, and we can see that there is this unique arrow from the pullback to the Cartesian product x to z. This is not in general a injection, so we need to take the image of this map, which will give us the composition. The graph relation f x to y is determined by um, these two arrows, the identity and f, and so we see that it actually gives us a, a split mono, and so we have that graph relation actually giving you a relation. We also have that there are forgetful functors from topological groups to topological spaces and topological groups to groups. Finally, um, there's a uh, concrete category of small categories over the category of graphs. And it's given by this forgetful functor, which forgets the composition in categories and the identity structure of categories. So we see that in example F that concrete categories are not necessarily injective on objects since all these objects are just going to um, the terminal category, which just has one object. Examples A, B, C, and D also show that concrete categories are often not full. When they are full, they'll be called embeddings. And our discussion on the Yoneda embedding explained why this is better suited as a, as a concrete category um, than the Cayley functor. And so we won't actually use a Cayley functor hardly at all in subsequent talks. So now let's see how well our heuristic of data structure property categories are in describing these examples. 
So we start with the concrete category of topological spaces over set. And we can realize this as a data structure properties category. We say that a topological space consists of a set equipped with the collection of subsets such that the following three axioms hold, that the empty set and X are in this topology for each collection of open sets. Um, so we call an object in, in tau X an open set. This collection of open sets, we have that the union of these open sets is an element of the topology. And for each pair of open sets, that the intersection of the, this pair is also an open set. It's in the topology. Then a top arrow, which is usually called the continuous map, is a set map such that for each open set, you take the inverse image of it, and it's going to uh, also be an open set. Note that this preservation of structure goes in the opposite direction. Um, and we'll try to explain why maybe it would be nice to flip these arrows around when we talk about frames and locales and, and things like that. And note that we have other ways of uh, giving a data structure properties presentation for the abstract category of topological spaces. And we'll talk more about this when we talk about concrete functors and concrete equivalences. Um, we can also realize the concrete category of metric spaces over set as a data structure properties category. We say a metric space consists of a set X equipped with this set map, which is a distance func function from um, the Cartesian product X squared to uh, the positive real numbers, subject to the following three axioms. The first diagram here is a commutative diagram. It says that, um, so that arrow on the left is the diagonal arrow. It takes uh, element X to the pair XX. And it says that the distance between two identical um, elements is going to be zero, and that nothing else will give you zero. So dxy is equal to zero if and only if x is equal to y. The second diagram there says that, um, that if you twist these, uh, you, you take the twist map there, which it just takes the, the projections and switches them around, and uh, it says that d xy is equal to dyx. And this third diagram is not commutative. Uh, it, it's saying that this is the uh, triangle inequality where you have, um, so dxz is going to be less than dxy plus dyz. Then a metric space arrow, uh, is, which is going to be this set map such that it's non-expansive, um, which is just saying that d prime composed, precomposed by f cross x is less than d. Uh, we will see how these structures are naturally a type of lax algebra in a subsequent sec section. We also have that uh, the, the group as a concrete category over set is a DSP category. Um, we can say a group consists of a set equipped with the following operations, E from the singleton set to G, which will denote the unit element. We have iota from, I, from G to G, which is going to represent the, the inverse, and alpha, G squared to G, which is going to give you the group operation. Then this structure is subject to the following axioms. The diagram on the left is giving us the unit axiom, the diagram in the middle is giving us the inverse axiom, and the diagram on the right is giving us the associative axiom. Um, then we have that a group arrow is a set map such that it that f preserves all the structure, i.e. that it preserves the identity, that preserves inverses, and that preserves the group operation. Uh, note that the, the preservation of the inverse follows from the other two. So we actually have to show that it preserves identity and uh, the group operation. For the Cayley functor, there is no obvious way to give a 
small category A, a data structure properties presentation. And this is because the what we're doing is we're taking the information, categorical information of A, and encoding it in set. The smallness ensures that this is going to be a set. However, we're not going we're not doing what we usually do when we think of a data structure properties presentation, which is starting with a set and giving it some sort of structure. And there is no obvious way to do this. And so you might want to think of this concrete category as somehow pathological. Similarly, the Oneida embedding is also pathological, we think, but you can give it a data structure properties presentation, which we will do, but we don't suggest you think of a small category as um, this data structure properties um, category. So the, the presentation can be given as, as such. Uh, we have an object in this small category A as a pre-sheaf equipped with its category of elements such that the category of elements is a filtered category. Then you can define an A arrow as this natural transformation such that the following diagram commutes it's this preservation of structure and then you can show that gamma must have come from this unique um, A arrow and so we can regain all the information of A from the, the this data structure properties um, description in the category of pre-sheaves but again we don't think you should think of, uh, of, of a small category in this way in the case of thin categories, there is no obvious way that you can um, you can give structure to a point so that two points with no arrow between them can be uh, somehow uh, encoded by the the category one, since there is always one arrow between the identity arrow um, in this category one, the terminal category. So there's no obvious data structure properties presentation for them. The category given by the walking arrow into a non-empty category X has also no data structure properties presentation. Um, it's we could think of this as like a very free um, construction. It's actually just going to um, we for every arrow in X there's going to be a functor from this walking arrow ca category to X, and so it's also also pathological. The concrete category set over relation is also pathological. This is kind of obvious. Um, but we will return to this and we will discuss it when we talk about the category of sets. In the case of topological groups, we can use the data structure properties from A and B above uh, and replace set by group and topological space, respectively. Um, and, and in this case, we're going to use the underlying set of the group to define the topology. There's a data structure properties presentation of small categories concrete over graphs. So a small category consists of a graph A, which is a set of vertices, A0, and a set of arrows, A1, and set maps, which denote the source and target vertices for each arrow. Um, and it is equipped with these set maps I, which is going to take a vertice and assign it to a unique arrow, which will be the identity in the category for each vertice, you think of vertices as these objects and the arrows as arrows in the category. And we also have the set map C, which is going to denote the composition. You have uh, A2 to A1, where A2 is given by this pullback. In, in other words, it consists of all these composable pairs. And then this structure is subject to the following commuting conditions. The diagram on the left is saying that the identity um, has the same source and target. So it, the identity is going from an object to the same object. The middle diagram is saying that uh, that if you compose the identity, pre-compose or post-compose, with any arrow, then you're going to get the same arrow back. And the third diagram here is saying that it that composition is associative. Um, and so we use this uh, this A3 to denote the multiple pullback here. And you can check that that is the same as saying, uh, it's, it's the same as giving triples, which are composable. So F, G, and H, which have, um, which can be composed. Then we have that a cat arrow is, if, or in other words, a functor, 
is a graph arrow, and a graph arrow is given by this, this assignment of vertices to vertices and arrows to arrows, or objects to objects and arrows to arrows, and it preserves identity and composition. So if a mathematician wants to uh, encode everything as a set, this example actually shows how to encode categorical structure in the category of all sets. However, we have to be a little cautious because um, if you want to deal with large categories, we need to assume the existence of inaccessible cardinals. Those are those cardinals which are not constructible by unions of power sets, uh, power sets starting with the empty set. So these von Neumann universes, or von Neumann, I don't know what it's called, von, von Neumann structure. Anyways, you can look it up. And um, this can be achieved by using zermelo frankel plus choice and some, some axioms with Groton Deke universes. Um, we can also just use what um, the authors in The Joy of Cats use, which is sets, classes, and conglomerates. And you can look at their book uh, in the first chapter, I think it is, where they discuss this. So as a final thought, the image you should have of a concrete category over X is one of encoding arrows. So when the concrete category can be given by data structure properties presentation, then we, then we regain our naive concept of an X-structured object.